Hello, sports fans. I'm Bill Hampton along with Ed Gargas, and we're at Bearcat Events Center for tonight's uh, varsity game between the Dexter Bearcats and Cape Central Tigers. Tonight is senior night and a very special night to all the uh, cheerleaders that are seniors, also the uh, kicking cats and the varsity basketball team, and they're going to be introduced and honored here between the JV and the varsity game. Cape Central won the JV game 56-26. And uh, the varsity game will be coming up right after the free uh, after uh, all the introductions. Yes. So uh, we're looking forward to that. We'll take a short break after this, after the uh, introductions and, and all the accolades for the seniors for the hard work that they've done uh, since since they've been uh, able to play sports and and also cheerleaders and also the kicking cats and the kicking cats are going to have a special routine at halftime tonight. Great. So look Great. forward to that. Look forward to that. Hip hop. Hip hop routine. Well, you know, hip hop nation. That, that's big in Dexter right now, so it ought to Is be very it? entertaining. I, I guess I missed that. Well, you know, you're down there in Malden, Bill. So uh, <laughs> we move you up here to the city. It's Ed, all about the urban world, you Ed know. And only sleep there. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we love Malden. We love Malden. <laughs> Hopefully, we have some of them tuning in this evening as well to see a good basketball matchup between Dexter and Cape Central. So uh, here, just shortly, as they're preparing the court. Uh, the senior night festivities will begin. Well, we, Ed, I'm going to turn it over to you. You uh, you know these young folks. Uh, you live here in Dexter and, and do a great job working with New Wave Communications. So we're going to let you uh, MC this for us. I'll do my best. But here's Mr. Matthews bringing the last of the boutonnieres and flowers, corsages, whatever. So hopefully here we'll uh, see the program get started. Ed, we got a good crowd on hand tonight, especially on the uh, uh, side where the players sit. Good, good crowd. And, and over on the uh, student side, uh, it's a little sparse tonight. Hopefully it'll get a little, uh, little bigger. Special night. Seniors uh, are now coming out onto the court. Ed, I'll yes. turn it over to you. Okay, yes, a lot of proud students, but even more so proud moms and dads. And, boy, there are going to be a lot of them. Uh, so uh, this just a testament to the activities here at Dexter, providing a wide range of extracurricular activities, but also the student body and willingness to get involved in all those different activities. So, uh we have them all lined up now. They stretch the entire length of the court. Here we go. First, we have Madison Baker. Madison is the daughter of Beth and Greg Baker. She has been a varsity basketball cheerleader for three years, on the track team for two years, and on the cross-country team for two years. She is also a member of the FTA, DECA, and the FCA. Madison plans to attend college at the University of Missouri and major in textile and apparel management. Next, we have John Bowman, the son of Eddie and Cindy Bowman. John has been a member of the basketball and golf team for four years of high school. He also is a member of FCA, FBLA, FFA, and the Dexter Honor Society. John plans to attend college at Graceland University and major in business education. Next, we have Megan Smith Bramer, one of the YAC interns. She is the daughter of Monty and JT Bramer. Megan has been a member of the dance team for three years, and she was on the tennis team her freshman year. Megan is also active in FBLA, FTA, and she is on the journalism staff. She plans to attend Murray State University and major in journalism with a focus on television broadcasting. I wonder where she got that from. Getting a start right here at YAC. And next we have Alex Dale. She is the daughter of Jeff and Brittany Cecil. Alex has been a member of the dance team for the past two years, and she was on the cheerleading squad her freshman year. Alex serves as vice president of FBLA, president of DECA, and is a member of the FTA and Dexter Honor Society. She plans on pursuing an RN degree at TRCC, Three Rivers Community College, one of our sponsors here at Dexter Basketball. Next we have Emily Darnell. Emily is the daughter of Sheila and Tom Darnell. Emily has been a football cheerleader four years and a basketball cheerleader for the past three years. Emily is also a member of the FFA and FTA. She plans to attend college at Murray State University and major in elementary education. 
And next is Devin Mason, the daughter of Mike Jansen and Ramona Mason. Devin has been a member of the dance team her junior and senior year, a football cheerleader her junior year, the softball team her sophomore and junior year, and will be on the track team her senior year. She is a member of the FCCLA, FCA, FTA, and the Dexter Honor Society. She plans to major in recreational therapy at Arkansas State University. Great university. The Red Wolves. Next we have Hannah Mathis. Hannah is the daughter of John and Dana Mathis. Hannah has been a member of the dance team her junior and senior years and was a member of the volleyball team her freshman year and cross country team her sophomore through senior year. She also serves as the student body vice president on student council. She serves as secretary of the FCCLA and is a member of the FCA Art Club, FTA, and Dexter Honor Society. Hannah plans to attend college at Three Rivers Community College and major in LD Elementary Education. Next, we have Sarah Phillips, the daughter of Tom and Lisa Phillips. Sarah has been a varsity cheerleader member since her sophomore year. She was on the track team and a football and basketball cheerleader her freshman year. She has a varsity football cheerleader her sophomore year. So Sarah has been selected as a Stoddard County All-County cheerleader during her sophomore, junior, and senior years. She is a member of the FCA, FTA, and the Dexter Honor Society. She plans to attend college at Arkansas State University and pursue a degree in medicine. Next is her brother, Walt Phillips, also the son of Tom and Lisa Phillips, has been a member of the basketball team four years of high school, and he is also a member of the Fellowship of Christian Athletes. Walt plans to attend Southeast Missouri State University after graduation, another great university in our area, home of the Red Hawks. <laughs> Next we have Keeley Smith. Keeley is the daughter of Serena and Richard Smith. Keeley has been a member of the dance team for two years. Keeley is also a member of the SCCLA and DECA. She plans to atten attend Three Rivers Community College and pursue an RN degree. Tana Stock, Tana Stock another YAC intern, the daughter of Bill and Tracy Stock. Tana has been a member of the dance team for two years, and she is also a member of FTA and FCCLA. Tana plans to attend college and major in journalism and mass communications. Brandon Stoker, the son of Craig and Deffrey Stoker. Brandon has been a member of the basketball team and baseball team four years of so high school. He is also a member of the FCA, FTA, and FFA. Brandon plans to attend college at Mississippi State University and major in agriculture. Gary Summers. Gary Summers, the son of Debbie Summers. Gary has been a member of the basketball team four years and the football team the past two years. He is a member of the Dexter Honor Society and ranked in the top 10% of his class. Gary plans to attend college and major in business. Sarah Tolbert. Sarah is the daughter of Danita Morgan. Sarah was a member of the Boris basketball cheerleading team and track her freshman year and a member of football cheerleading, dance team, and track team her sophomore through senior year. She is also a member of the FTA and FCA. Sarah plans to attend college at Southeast Missouri State University and eventually become a veterinarian. Next, we have Jamie Wilburn. Jamie is the daughter of Michael and Angela Wilburn. Jamie has been a member of the dance team and her, since her sophomore year, and she was a member of the varsity football cheerleading squad her junior and senior years. Jamie is also active in the student council, FCA, FCCLA, and the Dexter Honor Society. She plans on majoring in physical therapy at Arkansas State University after graduation. And lastly, we have Ryan Wyndham. Ryan is the son of Don and Vicki Wyndham, has been a member of the basketball team and football team for four years of high school. He is a member of the FCA, FBLA, FTA, and the Dexter Honor Society. Ryan's future plans are attend college and major in business. And there you go, ladies and gentlemen. These young men and ladies have provided us with many nights of exciting basketball action and entertainment in this gym and at our out-of-town out games. They have devoted countless hours of practice and preparation to do their individual best for the team or squad. Their team members, classmates, and teachers will miss the leadership and commitments they have made to our extracurricular programs and our students community. We have a high regard for each of them and appreciate their never-ending effort. You'll see now as the crowd shows their appreciation of these seniors, athletes, and their parents. That's Very nice uh, ceremony, Ed. Great job of uh, telling us about the uh, young people and their parents. And, uh, well, they're all going to go to college, and that, that's great. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. It, 
you know, and these are some of the best Dexter High School has to offer. They represent the school well, not just at events here, but in the classroom and outside of the school itself. Well, we're going to take a short break, and uh, we'll be back in about, uh, oh, about eight to ten minutes to give you the preview of tonight's game. Well, welcome back. We're almost uh, ready for action. Again, I'm Bill Hampton along with Ed Gargas on camera tonight. We have Haley Stockton and Brandon Horton. Our producer tonight is Tyler Wagner. And, again, this is our 53rd game wow. to do this season. Yeah, that's a lot. And that's Cape lot Central makes the 33rd different school that we have covered. That's tremendous. Just hitting that much variety and, and coverage in our little area. So uh, we appreciate what YAC has done for their customers here at New Wave Communications. And, Bill, you and Tyler, thanks for hustling out there and uh, bringing all that different uh, <laughs> schools to us here in our viewing area. We, we've had a good time. We enjoy it. I, I talked to Coach Drew Church of the uh, Cape Central Tigers getting the starting lineups for his team tonight. Told him what we did, and he just looked at me and said, you did what? <laughs> <laughs> I said, 53 games. <laughs> so, 33 different schools. So it, it's been a whirlwind, a fun season. We've had a lot of people to help us, and we really uh, have had a, a lot of comments, and, and, and all of them have been positive. We yeah. really appreciate it. Uh, we expect uh, to – well, let's talk about who's going to bring tonight's game. Lincoln Lacey and Malden, also Three Rivers Community College. Edward Jones, stop in and see Charlie Flanagan with Edward Jones in Dexter. New Wave Communications, Winchester Place in Bernie, Dexter Pizza Hut, SEMOSportsWeb.com, Trammell and Son Realty in Dexter, also Allen Christian Buick, Pontiac GMC in Dexter, and Countywide Abstract in Dexter. Folks, if you, if you like watching these games, tell those folks how much you appreciate it when you see them. They're great sponsors, and, and we're always glad to talk about the people that bring the games to, uh, to you each and every time. We've got referees tonight uh, will be Bobby Godwin, Greg Riggs, and Mike Burcham. And they've got a lot of experience. Cape Central Tigers come into this game with a record of 15 wins, 7 losses. They'll be in the orange uniforms. That's the Cape Central Tigers. I had the Indians down, but it's the Tigers. <laughs> uh, I, we just They just changed back, Scotch. <laughs> and uh, their, their head coach is Drew Church, uh, assisted by Seth McDowell. The Bearcats come in with a record of 13 wins, 11 losses, and their head coach, Rob Nichols, Sean Geatley, the assistant. Again, if you've not been to the Bearcat Event Center, if you ever have a chance, come by and take a look at it, folks. It is a show place. What a great place to not only play, but to watch and broadcast a game from. Congratulations to the citizens of Dexter for having the foresight to vote that bond issue in. and and uh, build and, and renovate their school. And I, I know they've got to be happy. Uh, the, the citizens here, are, are they just do a great job in this community. Absolutely. And, and it's really a, kind of a great deal uh, when the, the city voted to uh, the for the bond issue is kind of when we, uh, and I don't fully understand it, but I heard Dr. Jackson talk about it a couple different times. We had a different another bond maturing, retiring that debt, and it was a matter of, well, it's kind of where we need to borrow some money to maintain our premier or our best credit rating. If we did not borrow the money, we risked the, the school's credit rating going down. And so it kind of helps make that a little easier sell. And uh, the facility was designed uh, with the budget. And so it's just a great, great facility. And hats off to the school board for wanting to do it and for the citizens here in Dexter for allowing them to do it. Well, Dexter, a very progressive community, and White Seas, uh, proud to be part of that. Also, our other communities in our viewing area, we're just uh, from Marmaduke, Arkansas, up to Bloomfield, and White Seas, seen on Channel 21 on New Wave Communications. Also, webcasting on YHCTV.com worldwide. Dr. Rick Huck's down here waving yep. at us. Well, we're, ready, see, uh, uh, we're ready for the national anthem, and uh, we're going to be ready for the start of this game. 
the uh, Dexter Choir is going to come out and sing tonight. And I tell you, Ed, Mary Ruth Boone, the choir director here at Dexter, I can't say enough nice things of what she does. Gets the students around. And I tell you, folks, she will be well entertained with the national anthem here. These, these folks can sing so well, and they just bring chills to you every time they sing. So we're going to be quiet. We're going to turn it over to them and hope you enjoy our national anthem. Well, the Dexter Choir singing the National Anthem. We're ready for basketball. Let's uh, meet the starters tonight for the Cape Central Tigers. Again, their head coach, Drew Church, assisted by Seth McDaniel. Tigers come in with a record of 15 wins, seven losses. Tyler, I, I am correct in saying they did tie for the uh, CMO Conference, the Tigers. They, did, they were not one of the five. They, they were fifth, excuse me. Number 12, a 6'1", junior, Blake Osmond. Number 20, a 6'5", junior, Andrew Williams. Number 22, a 6'5", junior, James Lane. Number 24, 5'10", senior, Terrence Howard. And number 44, a 6'6", junior, Zach Corbon. Bearcats record of 13-11. Rob Nichols, the head coach. Sean Geatley, the assistant. Number three, a, soft, a senior, a 5'10", senior, Brandon Stoker. Dexter will start all seniors tonight. Number five, a 6'4", senior, Ryan Wyndham. That is if John Bowman can go. If John Bowman can go on that ankle, and he's going to go. We see him getting up. Number 23, a 6'3", senior, John Bowman. Number 10, a 6'0", senior, Gary Summers and number 32, a 6'4 senior, Walt Phillips. It's senior night. Seniors get to start. Flanagan will be in in just a few minutes. Again, starting for the Bearcats, Stoker, Wyndham, Summers, Bowman, and Phillips for the Tigers. Osmond, Williams, Lane, Howard, and Borboon. Tigers are very tall. It, yes, they are. And, uh, I think they start three three players at 6'4 or taller. And so uh, Bearcats are going to have the work cut out for them tonight. Lane and Phillips will jump it up. Bobby Godwin will pitch it up. We're ready for basketball. Strap it in, folks. Let's go for a barn burner. Central controls the, the tip. Howard has it. Steal That's the takeaway. Summers has it. Tried to hit. All right. Steal by Stoker, Stoker trying to hit Summers. Summers. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry oh. to interrupt you there, Bill. It's all right. I just got excited. Ball tipped out of bounds by the Cape Central Tigers. Stoker will inbound under his own basket. Pitches out to Bowman. Gets it to Wyndham, to Summers. Cape Central looks like they're in a matchup. Bowman for three for the wing, in and out. Rebounded by Williams. Williams quickly to Howard. Howard into the front court. Dexter's in a matchup. Both teams in a matchup. Osmond with the ball, gets it back to Howard. Down in the corner to Borboon. Swings it out 
and a three-pointer that time knocked down by Andrew Williams. Williams gets the first bucket of the game. 7-12, left in the first quarter. Tigers up. Stoker into the front court. He drives, puts up a runner. Will not go and short out of bounds over to the Tigers. Dexter will fall back. Again, they're in a matchup. Howard will run the offense. Gets it to to, uh, Williams. Williams uh, down in the corner. Gets it back out to Howard. Good ball movement by the Tigers. Very patient. Shot put up that time by Osmond. Would not go out of bounds off the Tigers. 6.37 6.37 left this opening quarter. Both teams feeling each other out, Ed. Yes, and I expect that to take a few more seconds, but uh, pretty soon one of them's going to take off. Bearcats a little different set, not having Flanagan in at the moment, but here we see him up off the bench, and he's waiting to check in now. Stoker gets it down to Bowman. Bowman still with the ball, gets it to Wyndham. Wyndham puts up one for 14 off the Got backboard, it. scores it. He'll go the line to try to complete the three-point play. Nice move, good shot put up that time by Ryan Wyndham, the 6'4 senior. Flanagan checking into the game. Walt Phillips checking out. Flanagan, a 6'6 senior, or 6'6 junior. Very strong. I mean, uh, he has really worked on his game. Foul that time was on Barboon, his first. Wyndham can't get the free throw to go. Rebounded by Lane. Osmond into the front court with a ball. Gets the ball down to Bar Boone, who skips it over to Williams. Williams for three. Did not make it that time. Flanagan with the rebound. Flanagan had 32, uh, 32 points the other night and 19 rebounds. Good patience shown by the Bearcats. Summers has it. Skips it to Flanagan. Flanagan for three. Will not go. Rebounded on the floor with Summers. He gets it to Stoker. Back to Summers. We're down to 545. Left in the first quarter. Wyndham inside. Puts it up. Flanagan saved it off of one of the Cape Central Tigers. I think Good that was off Borboon. Flanagan. Borboon is a big young man, isn't he? Yes. Borboon, I believe. Borboon. Stoker, eyes up the offense. Five and a half minutes left in this quarter. Bowman with the ball. Flanagan from 16. Can't get it to go. Rebounded by Lane. He gets it to Howard. Clock running. Low scoring game so far. Good takeaway by Wyndham. He gets it to Summers. Summers goes in, has a ball blocked. Out of bounds off of the Tigers. Good uh, defense that time by Williams. Of course, Williams 6'5". Summers comes in at six feet. And, uh, boy, I tell you, Cape Central's big. They're tall. Bowman at time tried to get inside to Flanagan. Ball knocked out of bounds by Lane. Bearcats will control under their own basket. 5.05 left in this first quarter. Wyndham passes out to Bowman. Bowman for three, will not go. Rebounded that time by Williams, who gets it to Osmond. Osmond tried to hit Howard with it. Ball knocked out of bounds by the Bearcats. Gerald checking into the game. Gerald wears number 45 for the Bearcats. Osmond skips it to Borboon. Cheryl takes the ball away. Another turnover by the Tigers. 440 left in this first quarter. 3 twos the score. Get a heat up here in a minute. Defenses are playing well. Neither team hitting well. Bearcats working the ball around a lot, trying to find an opening for Flanagan. But uh, Flanagan being mashed up pretty well with the height yep. of, Kate, of Tigers this evening. Stoker with a runner. Can't get it to go. Gerald with a tip. And that wouldn't go. Lane pulls it down for the Tigers. That's the 6'5 junior's third rebound this evening. Warboon from the corner will not go. Or Warboon put back that time by Lane. Lane with his 
first two. Four minutes left in the first quarter, 5-2, Tigers on top. Gerald inside, a good spin move, will not go. Flanagan tried to get the rebound, instead it goes to Osborne. Osborne. Tigers with the ball in the lead. Lane along the baseline, runs the loose ball down. Howard with a drive, puts it up, scores it. Nice move to the baseline there. Good quick first step to yes. uh, get him uh, get him loose. Down in the corner to Wyndham. He's going to drive the baseline, and we're going to have a charge. Great defense that time by Boar Boone as he saw, saw Wyndham coming down the baseline. First foul on Wyndham and the Bearcats. Brent Hester in for the Bearcats as Wyndham would take a rest. Also, uh, Watts in for uh, the, the Tigers. Watts, Watts had a great game in the JV contest. Yes, he did. Compass also in for the Tigers. Lane on a drive, he'll put it up. Dexter came with a half-court trap that time. Tigers beat it. Got the layup. 250 lifted this first quarter, 9-2. Tigers up by seven. Hester with the ball on the wing. Gets it out to Stoker. Hester's going to put up a three. Scores it. Brent Hester. His first basket, 9-5. Tigers up a four. Two and a half minutes left in his first quarter. Watts has a ball. Gets it back to Williams to Watts. Good ball move at that time inside the lane. He, uh, lane puts it up, scores it. Boy, inside Lane's the lane, great, too, Lane. Lane's having a great first quarter for the Tigers. What is it, six points, four six rebounds? Points. Yep. He may Showing be a lot of athleticism to match his six-five frame. He may be looking at a double-double tonight. Summers tried to hit Flanagan with it, but it bounced off his foot. Nice drive that time by Howard. Couldn't get it to go. Bearcats right back with it. Summers has it. Gets it to Flanagan. Flanagan with the ball. Puts up one short, but he'll go the line to shoot two. Allen Flanagan, the 6'6 junior, is looking for his first points. A minute and a half left in this first quarter. Foul that time was on. Josh Compass, his first, team second. And, Bill, these uh, free throws being brought to you this evening by Countywide Abstract and Title Company. Uh, there's Scott Chesser, president, located in downtown Dexter. That's countywide abstract of title for all your real estate needs. Planning gets the first to go. It's the second one down. 11-7. Minute 50 left in this first quarter. Williams with the ball. He gets it to Watts. Watts back to Williams, in the lane, out to Howard. Compass has it, skips it back out to Williams. Williams over to Howard there. Howard makes the drive. Williams at 6'5", still plays the guard and likes to shoot outside, so that's a tremendous there for the Tigers well, to have that, that like much height. Colleges like to look at that. you got a 6'5 guy out there playing. Uh, guard and because uh, six five is not going to make it on uh, you know in the forward in, in college. Right. Used to that that was a big guy. Not anymore. Passed inside the lane. It would not go. And we've got a foul against the Tigers. Good block at that time by Flanagan. Foul will go against. Well, I don't see a 23. But they're going to, it's going to go against number 20. So it's going to go against is Andrew yeah. Williams. It's going to be his first team's third. Minute 31 left in this first quarter. Bearcats trail before. They need a basket. Watts applying semi-pressure on Stoker. Gerald has it, gets it to Hester, Hester to Stoker, looking inside, he gets it back out front to Bowman. Bowman tried to hit Gerald with it, throws it out of bounds, 
minute 10 left in his first quarter. Man, Stokers there went on the offense. Five foot ten being mashed up against Howard at six five. That's a little taller opposition than he's seen all year long. Howard checking back in for the Tigers. Williams has it. Gets it to Howard. He gets it to Barbara. And we're gonna have a foul against the Bearcats. Be on Flanagan. His first. Teams third. Both teams now with three fouls. Williams will inbound for the Tigers. One minute left in this first quarter. Pitches out front. Tosman for the corner. Williams couldn't get it to go. Dexter comes away with it. 11 to 7. Under a minute here in the first quarter. Gerald has it. He's going to shoot it from the free throw line. Can't get it to go. Williams with the rebound. Gets it down to Howard. Osmond out, out front with the ball. Howard now has it to Lane. Tape trying to get it inside and get the short shot. Ball knocked out of bounds on a good defensive play by Bowman. Wyndham checking in for Gerald for the Bearcats with 19 seconds left in the first quarter. Glad you've joined us here on YHC. Howard out front, gets it to Osmond. Down to 10 seconds. Barboon with it. Barboon, I guess. Barboon. In the lane. Inside Back the lane. Back to Barboon. Back to Barboon. He puts it up. Nice drive that time with the big guy for his first two of the evening. That ends the first quarter with the Tigers on top, 13 to 7. We'll be right back. In the three and a half decades that we've been in business, Countywide Insurance has taken pride in being a partner in the lives and businesses of our customers. We've celebrated their triumphs and stood beside them in the hard times. We've been a resource and a sounding board for everything from protecting home and heart to reducing business risk. We're grateful for the trust our clients invest in us. We look forward to a continuing partnership with them, and we want to be the one you turn to. Your hometown agency, Countywide Insurance. And folks, if you've not been to the Winchester Place, come in and take a look at this facility. You don't know what you have missed. We are very proud of this facility. A lot of people do not realize we're here, what we can offer to them, and what a facility we have. And we would like to have people come by anytime and tour us. You won't find a better place to live or better staff to take care of you anywhere in Southeast Missouri. I'll guarantee it. We are located at 400 Winchester Drive. Come down Bowman, and we sit on the corner of Bowman and Winchester. Well, welcome back. Dexter will start with the ball to start the second quarter. Bearcats trail by six. Cape Central still in the matchup. Hester are on the wing. Thought about it, pulled it back. Thought about it again and pulled it back. Summers has it out front. Stoker now has it. They move Flanagan to the high post. Good drive by Hester. Couldn't get it to go. Rebounded by Wyndham. He puts it up. Scores it. Ryan Wyndham with his second basket. 13-9. Bearcats in a 2-2-1 zone. Full court trap. Nice block by Flanagan. Stoker has a ball. Dexter on the run. Stoker puts it up. Can't get it to go. Barboon with the rebound. Dexter had a chance there, Ed, to pull within two. Good defense, good block by Flanagan. Good drive by Stoker. He just couldn't get the job done. Couldn't finish it off. Osmond with a ball. Wendell with a takeaway. Stoker has it. Dexter with the numbers. Stoker drives in, scores it. Gets it this time. 6.45 left in the second quarter. Bearcats back within two. Barbone. Down inside the lane, he loses the ball, but it's off of Dexter. Checking in. Number three, Vance Tool. Vance Tool, he's a 5'10 sophomore. 
Hey, Cape, Cape's got some players coming off that JV, don't they? Yes, they do. They had an impressive performance earlier this evening. Ball passed in that time. They tried to hit Lane with it, but it goes off his hands out to Howard. Tool with it. Back Inside down the, lane. the lane. Or Bonal on the baseline. We're going to have a foul on Gary Summers. It's going to be his first. Team's fourth. 622 left in his first half. For you folks joining us from Cape on the internet, uh, we do not have the time on our screen we do have the score and we will let you know as much as you know as, as much as we can how much time's left in the quarter tool still with the ball gets it to Williams swings it down over to Howard clock running 610 left in this second quarter inside the lane lane uses his strength but we got a walking call with 604 to go Bearcats did a great job of yes, collapsing and building that wall around Lane that time. Just got him a little where he shuffled his feet. There he had the turnover. Dexter with a chance to tie or take their first lead of the game. Wyndham has it, kicks it out to Hester. Hester for three, will not go. Wyndham with another rebound, put it up, and it was blocked. Tigers with the ball. Williams put it up, will not go. Barbone, or Barboon with the rebound, and Wyndham going to be called for the foul. Brian Wyndham second. These free throws, Bill, brought to you by SEMO Sports Web, uh, your source for SEMO source for your scores, photos, news, and opinion. That's SEMOSportsWeb.com. Great website to keep up with all the scores and sports going on in and around the area. Zach Orboon, he's a six foot six junior. Boy, he's a big, big young man. Yes, he and he'll is. He'll be back next year. Windham now with two fouls, five team fouls against the Bearcats. Knocks the second one down. Tigers up by three with five and a half minutes to go. Bearcats just keep hanging around. Gerald has it. Gets it to Stoker for three. Scores nice it. Shot. That ties the game. Nice shot by Stoker. Tell you, he's an impressive young senior. I tell you, he just, he just gets the job done. Lane Take away by the Bearcats. Summers got it. He's into the center of the court. He's going to pull it up. Gets it to Stoker for three. Will that go? Big rebound that time by the Tigers. Under five minutes left in this first half. The big guy drives inside. Flanagan going to be called for the foul. His second. Team six. The line to shoot two will be Zach Borboon. Four fifty-one left. Score tied. First one will not go. Bowman checks back in for the Bearcats. Flanagan's going to take a seat. Flanagan thought he got charged there. That's what he's what he's aggravated about. They got called for the blocking foul. Second one good. Stoker out front, swings it to Summers, who gets it to Hester. Dexter being very patient. Cape Grotta, their, their defense is really tough in there, Ed. Bowman flashes through the middle, didn't get the ball. Dexter still the ball out front. We're down to 420 left in this first half. Stoker for a long three, will not go. Rebounded by Lane. Hester tried to go up with him, but about six inches too short. Yeah, or seven or eight. I tell you, Dexter's defense is tough right there along that lane. Summers just stayed after it and took the ball away from Bor Boone. Three fifty-five left. Bowman with the ball. Defense, 
Bearcats offense way out front. Bowman lights it up from three or lines it up from three. Lane with the rebound, gets it to Howard. Central end of the end quickly down the court. We're gonna have a blocking foul. Blocking foul will go against Brandon Stoker, his first. Team seven, that puts the Tigers into the bonus. Terrence Howard, he's a 5'10 senior. He has two points in a game. He'll be shooting two. Kind of a quiet crowd, Ed. Close game, but big defensive game, both sides. Both sides being, well, at least the Bearcats more so being very deliberate in their offense. I think that's showing a bit of maturity through the season, too. There, We've seen them a little earlier in the season when they might be making some questionable passes, but they've been very disciplined this evening. Cape's defense just keeps moving the offense further and further away from the basket. Hester on a runner, puts it up, will not go. Lane with another rebound. Down to Howard. Howard's going to pull it back out. 3.15 left in this first half. Williams from 12. Will not go. Hester goes up for the rebound, and Barboon Barboon is going to be called for his second foul on the back of Hester. A good block out by Brynn Hester. That's the 14th foul against the Tigers. Logan Roby checking in for the Bearcats. Going out is... Bryn Hester. Roby is a good shooter. Where's number 22? Gerald way out from the basket gets to Bowman. Bowman puts it up, scores it. John Bowman from 16 ties the game up. 16 all with 245 left in this first half. Howard still with the ball, gets it to Williams, who gets it to uh, Watts. No, that's Tool. Watts number five. Okay, excuse me. Nice shot that time by Williams. His second three of the game puts the Tigers up by three. Bowman gets it to Summers. Stoker has it out front. Tried to hit Bowman with it. The ball went one way, Bowman went the other. Checking in for the Tigers is Compass. Going out is Moore for Boone. 218 left in this first half. Very low scoring game. Osmond checking back in for the Tigers. Going out is Howard. Inside the lane off his fingertips. Couldn't handle it with 2.06 left. Bearcats with a chance to tie or cut the lead. I've been impressed at how patient the Bearcats are and how their defense is collapsing inside on the Tigers. Much taller team is Cape Central. Roby from the wing scores it. Sure. I'm telling you folks, the young, the young junior can shoot, can shoot the eyes out of it. We're getting ready for our third lead change of this game, 19 all. All in this quarter as well, Bill. Yep. Williams on uh, down in the corner, gets it to Tool. Back to Williams. Compass with it, gets it back to Tool. Good patience by the Tigers. Compass with the ball, gets it to Tool. We're down to 115 left in this first half. Husband has it inside the lane. Back the lane, inside. Out of bounds off of the Bearcats. Great defense as Summers double teamed along with Gerald. Making it tough on the taller Tigers with 59 seconds left in the first half. Out front to Osmond. Williams from the wing, no good. Lane with a big rebound, sticks it back. 
James Lane now with eight points in the half. And eight rebounds to match. Bearcats need to take care of the ball. They're within two. Roby on the wing to Summers to Gerald. 25 seconds left in this first half. Stoker on a runner. Going to be called for a charge. It's going to be his second. 16.8 seconds left. Howard checking back in for the Tigers. Osmond checking out. Hester checking in for Stoker for the Bearcats. Williams will inbound against the 2-2-1 zone press. Howard down the side. Summers cuts him off. Williams has it. Gets it to Tool. Down to two seconds. Bowman with a takeaway. And the horn goes off before the Bearcats can put up a shot. It ends the first half with the Tigers on top, 21-19. We're going to keep it right here because the Kicking Cats, a dance group here from the Dexter High School, are going to entertain this crowd with some hip-hop and uh, really look forward to watching this, Ed. Yes, Bill, I think I will too. Yes, it's going to be very entertaining. I apologize. Tell you, every time they come out to do a routine, I mean, everybody stays and watches. This This is something else. These girls are very, very good, so we're going to turn it over. We're going to be quiet so you can watch and listen. Kicking cats. Cats entertaining the crowd here at the Dexter Gym. I'm sorry I didn't recognize the song, but uh, the dance routine was wonderful. I tell you, those girls are as good as any college team you'll watch. Absolutely, and it's a lot of hard work, dedication, not only by them, but their sponsors and their practice time. So uh, congratulations to the Kicking Cats for another fine performance. Well, we're going to take a short break, get some stats together, and we'll be back in just a few minutes for the second half. 
if you believe that investors should be heard, not herded. If you have the audacity to believe I can see you in two weeks is quite frankly weak. Join the nearly seven million investors who think like you do. FaceTime and ThinkTime make a difference. Join us. Join us. Join us. At Edward Jones, it's how we make sense of investing. Hey, I'm Kurt Hillis at Lincoln Lacey Chevrolet. We've got a full line of GMC, Chevrolet, and Buick products. I'll pass it over to my Ford man, Charlie Thacker. GM's not your thing? Come check us out here at the Ford Dodge Jeep store. Check out my man Blake on the internet, lincolnlacey.com. If you don't have time to come down to Malden, check us out on cars.com or autotrader.com. And if you need financing, I'm going to pass it to my man, Robert Sanders. And our ultimate goal here at Lincoln Lacey, no matter your situation, is to pass the savings on to you. So you're wondering what's the better deal, cable or the dish? Well, let's see how they size up. The dish has no local office, no ability to provide their own high-speed internet or phone for bundled savings, and can require a two-year contract with hefty early termination fees. Cable, on the other hand, has local offices, its own high-speed internet, and phone services with a lot of great features. New Wave Communications, there really is no better choice. For lunch, supper, anytime, the best food in Dexter is always Pizza Hut Wing Street. Our famous pizzas are handmade with all natural ingredients, no fillers, no preservatives. For a quick lunch, try our buffet. Eat all you want. Our delicious pasta selections will soon be your family favorite. And Wing Street Wings are perfect for get-togethers. Wing it like a pro. Add potato wedges, dunkers, or mini pies with a two-liter of your favorite Pepsi product, and you've got a full meal. There's always something good cooking at your Dexter Pizza Hut. Call or order online today. Trammell & Son Realty is Stoddard County's premier real estate company. After 70 years in the real estate business, we know this area. With over 200 years combined experience, we know real estate. With access to multiple MLS services, we can find and list homes across the broad area. And we stay on the cutting edge of technology. The fastest sales and closing. Real estate is our business, but our real business is people. We're proud of our community. And the people that live here. Trammell and Son Realty, leading the way in Stoddard County real estate. In today's competitive market, you need a dealer you can trust. And you can find that at Alan Christian and Dexter. Since 1958, my dad Alan and the rest of our family have been selling cars in the southeast Missouri area. For over 50 years, we've taken care of you, our customer, with great service and selection at the best price. Our experienced sales staff makes your buying simple. Take a look at our inventory online, or better yet, right here on the lot. Remember, you'll like the way we do business at Allen Christian and Dexter. I chose Three Rivers Community College because it's a great place to start. I'm taking the same freshman and sophomore classes as at a university, but at TRCC they cost a lot less and financial aid goes further. I love the individual attention. My teachers are great and classes are convenient. Learn more at www.trcc.edu or call 877-TRY-TRCC. Start here, start now at Three Rivers Community College. Learn more online at trcc.edu. Well, welcome back. Let's do some stats here at halftime, Ed. Go for, ahead. Let's go. For the uh, Cape Central Tigers, uh, they're led in scoring by James Lane. He has uh, eight points, six by Andrew uh, Williams, Zach Boone with four, and Terrence Howard with three. Foul-wise, uh, uh, Boone has two, one by Compass, and one by Andrew Williams. Cape Central three for six from the line. For the Bearcats, they have six players in scoring. They're led by Brandon Stoker with five, four by Ryan Windham, three by Brandon Hester and Logan Roby, two by Alan Flanagan and John Bowman. Foul-wise, Flanagan with two, Windham with two, Stoker with two, and one each to Summers and Hester. Two for three from the free throw line are the Bearcats. What do you have for us? So, well, as far as the three-point uh, you just talked about there, uh, I'm tracking Dexter being three for nine behind the arc, and... Uh, Cape Central being one for three behind the arc. After Williams came out and popped that first shot, they just really didn't get much done behind the line after that. Tribute that to the Dexter Bearcat offense. But uh, also looking on the rebounds, um, 
Cave Central, they're high taking advantage there. They're leading uh, Dexter 14 to seven in the rebound category. And uh, but the uh, Dexter Bearcat defense a little bit smaller, but just as quick. Got some great hands out there, uh, helping the, with the turnover situation. Uh, Dexter two turnovers in the first half, where Cave Central had eight. And so uh, where Cats haven't had to be rebounded is because the Tigers turning that ball over thanks to that aggressive defense by the by the Bearcats. I want to tell you this game brought to you in part by Lincoln Lacey Motors in Malden. Also, Three Rivers Community College. Edward Jones, stop by and see Charlie Flanagan with Edward Jones. New Wave Communications. Also, Winchester Place in Bernie. Dexter Pizza Hut. SemoSportsWeb.com. Trammell and Son Realty in Dexter. Alan Christian, Buick Pontiac. GMC in Dexter. Also, Countywide Abstract in Dexter. Tell those folks how much you enjoy them bringing this game to you. Second half, we're about ready to get underway. Bell saw uh, Jackson head coach Darren Scott in the crowd this evening. Bumped into him downstairs as he was, had a matchup with Cape Central next week. Wanted to come and see a little bit, so uh, glad to see him over here. He commented on the facility as well. See him up there talking with uh, Chuck Power, assistant principal at the middle school. So our good friend Scott Nelson from Montgomery Banks up there. Just a great crowd all around here. Uh, several orange and black shirts and jerseys in the crowd. And so uh, glad to see the Cape Central Tigers traveling over here to our humble facility, the Dexter Bearcat Event Center. Hopefully uh, they're enjoying the game and uh, admiring as well as enjoying this fine facility. Tigers will start with the ball to start that second half. Going to be key for first four minutes for the uh, Bearcats. See what they do defensively and see if they can get it going offensively. Or Boone, or Boone with the ball. Top the key. Flanagan's on him. Flanagan has two fouls. Has to be very careful. Again, Dexter in the matchup. Wyndham way out front. I tell you, the Dexter Bearcat have really been impressed with the pressure. Nice drive at time of Barboon. He cannot get it to go. We're going to have an over-the-back foul on Flanagan. His third. He picks up that foul, the third foul, very quickly. Williams will inbound. Tries to go to lane with it. Again, the Bearcats have that defense very well. Window nice. with a nice move. Couldn't get it down. It goes off of the Tigers will stay with the Bearcats. What a nice move by Great Wyndham. crossover there by Wyndham. You said it going to the left, crossover to the right. Just couldn't get the layup to fall. We're going to say it goes over to the Tigers. 7-27. Left to go in the third quarter, just underway here in the second half. Glad you joined us. Tigers working patiently against the press. Ball pass down the lane, taken away by Flanagan. Down to Summers quickly into the front court. Flanagan top the key. Tried to go inside to Flanagan. Ball knocked away. Dexter will run it down. Under seven minutes left in the third quarter. Down to Flanagan underneath. He puts it up. He's going to go to the line to shoot two. Flanagan has, has yet to hit a field goal. He has two points in the game, both free throws. Foul going to be on lane. His first. first. Team's first. Flanagan to the line for two free throws. First one short. Flanagan, a 6'6 junior. Knocks the second one down, he now has three. You could say, you know, Flanagan needs to get offensively. He's going to have to really get into the game. But you can say the same thing for the Tigers. Absolutely. Bearcats with a takeaway on the press. Stoker goes inside with the runner. Scores it. Bearcats with their first lead tonight. Well, I, I, yeah, I take that back. Uh, we've had uh, four lead changes, so they've been up twice. <laughs> First lead of the second half. How there you that? go. There you go. Williams for the Wii. Will not go. Bowman with the rebound. Bearcats with the ball. Down to Wyndham. Back to Summers. Bowman eyes it for three. Short. 
Rebounded by Barboon with the uh, Cape Central Tigers. 6-10 left in this third quarter. Barboon kicks it to, to Osmond. Back into Barboon. He works against Bowman. Bowman going to be called for the foul. I tell you, this 6-6 junior fills that uh, lane up down there. I'm telling you. Rick Murray says he now officially has uh, Chief Bankin on standby. Expecting a barn burner here this evening. Poor Boone cannot get the first one to go. Rick, we're glad that you uh, joined us here. And thanks for the email. Poor Boone, this is the third time, and he's been the line for two shots. He's missed his first each time and made the second each time. I saw Chief just come down out of the stands with his radio, so yep. we'll see what. He may, he may be headed to Rick's the Rick's talking to him. Yep. Flanagan inside, he's going to be fouled by Boar Boone. That's his third. Both the big guys have three fouls with 5.56 left in this third quarter. Tied game. Flanagan has it on the wing, drives in, puts up a jumper, scores it. Nice his shot first field Flanagan. goal. We've seen him do it a lot this year. That's Turnover good by the Tigers. Dexter Press is bothering the Tigers. Dexter will inbound under their basket as no one touched the ball inbounds. Wyndham will pass the ball in. He gets it to Stoker. Stoker with the runner. Gets it over to Bowman. Down to Bowman on the wing. He gets it down to Wyndham. Wyndham drives in, puts it up, ball. Uh, the ball, it was a good block there by Bar Boone. Howard with the ball in the front court, under five and a half minutes. Bar Boone, good fake. Good defense with John Bowman. He saves it right to Stoker. Good hustle by the senior. It, he turned an ankle last Saturday. Looks like he's playing well on it tonight. Very Bowman in the so. corner. Ball tipped out by the Tigers. Stoker inside, he's in, he's in tall timber there. Flanagan with the ball, puts up a shot, scores it! Alan Flanagan with a strong move. Dexter up by four, their biggest lead. Barboon pulls it up, will not go. Ball rebounded by Osmond, he puts it back. Osmond with his first points. 26-24, game is picked up. Summers tried to skip the ball across the lane and would not go out of bounds off of. Cape Central checking in as Compass for the Tigers and Gerald for the Bearcats. Barboon and Bowman go out. Summers out front to Flanagan. Flanagan drives baseline. We're going to have a foul against the Tigers. Foul will go against Osmond. Osmond. His first, team's third of the half. 4.34 left in this third quarter. Summers has it out front. Try to get it down to Flanagan. The ball taken away by Compass of the Tigers. Williams gets it to Compass. Out to Howard. Back into Compass. Good patience by the Tigers. Wyndham with an air takeaway, but Compass gets it back. We got a timeout with 4.08 left in this third quarter. We're going to take a short break. We'll be right back. Tramlinson Realty is Stoddard County's premier real estate company. After 70 years in the real estate business, we know this area. With over 200 years combined experience, we know real estate. With access to multiple MLS services, we can find and list homes across the broad area. And we stay on the cutting edge of technology. The fastest sales and closing. Real estate is our business, but our real business is people. We're proud of our community. And the people that live here. Trammell and Sun Realty, leading the way in Stoddard County real estate. Well, a quick 30 second timeout. We're back. Tigers with the ball. Coach Church was not happy. He is not happy the way his team's responding tonight to the Dexter defense. Williams on the wing. The ball was skipped all the way over to him. 
Lane puts up one, will not go. Summers with a rebound. Good fundamental basketball by the Bearcats on the block out. It's a much taller team. Into Gerald, no one on him. He goes in the lane, puts it up, scores it. Nice shot Taylor there Gerald by Gerald. His first two. Turned around and I don't think he expected to be open and then uh, sidestepped over in traffic and was able to put the ball in. Compass has a ball to Williams, to Osmond. Oh. Howard with it. Williams on the wing, gets it down the lane. Lane works against Flanagan, scores it. Lane now with 10 in the game, Ed. To go with eight rebounds. Wyndham on a drive, short. Rebounded that time by Williams. Tigers with a chance to tie or take the lead. Compass at the top of the key. 245 clock running. We're going to have a push foul on Stoker. He pushed just a little too hard on defense. His third. Team's third of the half. Both teams now with three fouls. Hester and Bowman checking back in for the Bearcats. More Boone back in for the Tigers. Wyndham and Stoker going out for the Bearcats. 245 clock running here in the third quarter. Lane inside. We're going to have a walking call against the Tigers. Looked like Lane had the baseline and he tripped on Bowman's foot. Yes, just couldn't release it. Hester with the ball, looking down to Bowman. Bowman is going to put up at three. Will not go. Flanagan with the rebound. He's going to put it back up. Scores it. Flanagan with seven and a quarter, nine in the game, 30-26. Bowman with a steal. Bearcats back at it. Bowman gets it to Hester. Hester inside the lane to Gerald. He puts it up. He's going to be fouled by Williams. It's going to be Williams second. The Tigers' 14 foul with 2-10 left in the game, uh, left in the third quarter. These free throws brought to you by Countywide Abstract and Title, located in downtown Dexter. Scott Chester, president. For all your real estate title needs, please contact Countywide Abstract and Title Company. Gerald seeks the first. Bearcats with their biggest lead tonight of five. Can't get the second one to go. Lane with the rebound. Two minutes left in this third quarter. Tigers with the ball, trail by five. For Boone, skips it over to Williams. Williams for three, scores it. Williams now with his third three. He has nine in the game. One, 145 left in the third quarter. Bearcats up by two. Summers to Hester. Ball skipped down to Flanagan. He's going to drive the baseline. It's going to be an offensive foul. We're going to have it. Let's see what, what the call is here. We're, we're going to see. I think we've got a foul against Flanagan. And then we're going to have a foul against Cape Central. It's going to go against Barboon after the foul by Flanagan on the drive. Barboon pushed off. So we're going to have a double foul. 31-29, 135 left in this third quarter. On a double foul, it will be a jump ball, so it will go with the team at, uh, on the alternate uh, jump. Well, Flanagan's going to shoot. Is that an intentional? I, I, guess, I, I guess it was. I, I'm lost. Flanagan misses the first. Knocks the second one down. He now has 10 in the game. 135. If that's the case, Dexter will have the ball. With 135 left, they will inbound from midcourt.
officials trying to tell the coaches what has happened. It's like Coach McDowell with Cape uh, trying to get his point across here. I think it's Coach Church. Excuse me. Excuse me. It looks like everybody's satisfied. We're going to get back to playing basketball. Dexter will have the ball with 135 left in his third quarter, up by three. Bowman will inbound. Both the big guys now with four fouls, Bor Boone and Allen Flanagan. Bor Boone of the Tigers, Flanagan of the Bearcats. They're going to let Dexter inbound under their basket. Now we're going to take it back to the center court. Bowman inbound to Summers. Summers looked to drive down the corner with Bowman. Back out, reverse it back out to Summers. He'll reverse. Got a push foul that time on Howard. His first to the team's sixth foul. Next foul on the Tigers will send the Bearcats to the charity line for the bonus. Jim Bowman inbounds to Summers. Over to Hester. Down to Bowman. Skips it across to Summers. He looks. Doesn't take the shot as Lane steps out. Over to Hester and back to Summers. Drive, Wyndham. Hester for three. Can't get it Bowman to go. rebound. And good. Bowman puts it back up, right-handed. He now has four to game. Boy, he's played a great defensive game. And got that weak side rebound on the missed three-pointer by Hester. Pass down the lane, taken away by Bowman. Another turnover. Caused by the Dexter defense. 40 seconds left in this third quarter. Pass down to Gerald. Out of his hands. Bowman for three. Right it down. John Bowman. Wow. He has five in the quarter, seven in the game. What a game the senior has played on senior night. He got a foul on Hester. It's going to be his first. Second. You are correct. Fifth team foul on the Bearcats. Bearcats up by 11, 40 to 29. Tool in the game for the Tigers. Where's number three? Howard drives, puts it up. Will I go? Lane gets it and puts it back. Lane now with 12, and he'll go the line to try to convert on the three point play. Young man also has 10 rebounds to match those 12 points, so he's in the double-double. Foul on Taylor Gerald, his first team six. The next foul against the Bearcats will put the Tigers in the bonus. So both teams are going to be in the bonus here on out. 11 and a half seconds left in this third quarter. Bearcats with the ball. Down to Bowman. He loses the handle on it. Tool takes it back. Tigers with it with one second. Howard going to put, he didn't get it off in time. That ends the third quarter. We've had a change on the score. The clock had too many points up there. 37 to 31. Bearcats on top of the Cape Central Tigers. We'll be right back. I chose Three Rivers Community College because it's a great place to start. I'm taking the same freshman and sophomore classes as at a university, but at TRCC they cost a lot less and financial aid goes further. I love the individual attention. My teachers are great and classes are convenient. Learn more at www.trcc.edu or call 877-TRY-TRCC. Start here, start now at Three Rivers Community College. Learn more online at trcc.edu. 
In today's competitive market, you need a dealer you can trust. And you can find that at Allen Christian and Dexter. Since 1958, my dad Allen and the rest of our family have been selling cars in the Southeast Missouri area. For over 50 years, we've taken care of you, our customer, with great service and selection at the best price. Our experienced sales staff makes your buying simple. Take a look at our inventory online, or better yet, right here on the lot. Remember, you'll like the way we do business at Allen Christian and Dexter. Well, welcome back. Again, uh, we apologize for having the wrong score down. We were going off the scoreboard. They added 40 to 29, and they changed that. It's 37-31, just underway in the fourth quarter. Bearcats on seat tonight with a six-point lead. Stoker has a ball. Flanagan still on the bench with four fouls for the Bearcats. Went them inside to Terrell. He puts it or puts it uh, to Gerald. He puts it up. Will not. Will not go. Howard with the ball into the front court. He gets it to Barboon, who puts up a shot. Will not go. Wyndham with the rebound. 7.25 left in his fourth quarter. Stoker tried to hit Gerald inside. Take it away by the Tigers. Howard's going to drive into the lane. Puts it up on a runner. Will not go. Lane with a big rebound. Sticks it back. 11 rebounds, 14 points by the junior. 6'5", junior. I tell you, Cape is going to be loaded next year. Bowman for three. Scores it. What a shot. John Bowman now with 10. Great shot there by Bowman. 40-33. Bearcats up by seven. Williams to Tool. Trying to skim it down to Barboon, and I'll tell you, Ryan Windham, Summers, and Bowman have played a tremendous defensive game for the Bearcats. Gerald out front. He gets it to Stoker. 6.15 left. Stoker for three. Will not go. Rebounded by Williams of the Tigers. Howard skips it down to Tool. Tool drives in against Gerald, puts it up, will not go. Wyndham had it taken away by Barboon. Ball tipped out of bounds by the Tigers. Bearcats were looking for a foul on the block out. Didn't get it, but they get the ball with six minutes left in the fourth quarter and a seven point lead. Well, we've seen a dandy tonight, folks. Bearcats playing their hearts at their best game that we've seen them play all year. Seniors against really the, stepping up. A quality team. Seniors are really stepping up tonight. Yes. Ball tipped and taken away by the Tigers. Howard in the front court. He's on the wing with the ball. Gets it to Barboon. Bowman with another steal. I tell you, Bowman has played a tremendous defensive game. Still the ball, goes in, puts it up. Will not go, rebound Barboon. Howard with the ball, 5.20 left in this fourth quarter. We have seen an exciting game. Low scoring, but what great defense for both teams. Ball thrown into lane off his hands, out of bounds, back over to the Bearcats. Osmond checking in for Barboon for the Tigers. Flanagan checking back in for the Bearcats. Flanagan with four fouls. Gerald steps out. Gerald did a great job while Flanagan was on the bench with the four fouls. Now let's see how aggressive Allen's going to want to be here in the last five minutes of the game. Well, he can't just sit back. No. So, but on the other hand, he's got to be very, very careful. There's ball into Flanagan. Back out to Stoker. He skips it over to Summer. Down low to Wyndham. Wyndham with a turnaround. It's blocked, yep. but Lane's going to be called for the foul. His second. The line to shoot two will be Ryan Wyndham. And these free throws, Bill, brought to us by uh, SEMO Sports Web. .com. Again, that's SEMO Sports Web for your source for scores, photos, news, and op op opinion on Southeast Missouri sports. Again, SEMOSportsWeb.com. Got a halftime score. Charleston up by one over Popper Bluff, 26-25. Flanagan going out. Gerald coming back in. Looks like we may be playing Flanagan as much as we can offensively and not defensively. Second and one by Wyndham. Scores it. Bearcats up by eight. 
4.45 to go in the ball game. Wyndham with a near steal, but off his hands out of bounds. Tigers will keep control. Howard with the ball. Boy, what great defense. Oh, here's Wyndham with a steal. Well, you can see it on that cross-court pass. He gets it down to Severs on the drive, scores it. I tell you, Gary Severs has played a great defensive game, his first basket on offense, but there's no fear of the seniors. He took it to the hole. Ten-point lead by the Bearcats. We're going to have a walking call against the Tigers. Ball turned over to the Bearcats with 4.17 left in the fourth quarter. Flanagan checks back in for Gerald. Dexter Bearcats with a 10-point lead with 4.17 to go in the ball game. I think you're right, uh, Coach Nichols calling, just like you said, Bill, saving Allen, Allen Flanagan for the offensive end. Yeah, he's not letting him down here on the defense and pick up a cheap foul. We saw that the other in the night. Game. We saw that the other night with Kent Popper Bluff. Whenever the Kent coach had a chance, Coach Vaughn, he had an offensive team and a defensive team on a stoppage of the clock. It looked almost like football. Summer's still with the ball. We're going to have a foul on the Howard. Howard's second. Team's eighth. The line for a one and one will be Gary Summers. He's a six foot senior. Boy, he has played a great game. He's, he only has two points offensively, but he has been a floor leader and tremendous defense and double teaming when that ball gets inside the lane. Summers will get the bonus. Carroll is on in for Flanagan. Yep. Second one by Summers. Will not go. Rebounded on the floor by Lane. Four minutes left in the third quarter. Tigers trail by 11. Howard with the ball. Summers is on Williams. I have been very impressed with the defense by the Bearcats. Inside the lane. Look at the defense collapse on him. Bowman's going to get called for a reach in. Bowman's second foul. Team seventh to the line for a one and one will be James Lane. He's a 6'5 junior. He has 14 in the game. He's 0 for 1 from the line tonight. Rick Murray emailing in saying he's smelling a lot of smoke. <laughs> smoke, smoke, smoke. Thank you much, Rick. Flanagan checking back in. For you folks uh, from Cape Girard area on the internet, but we have a good close game. Uh, we always call it a D-A-N-D-Y dandy or a barn burner, and we've had both tonight. Lane puts the first one up, misses, and will not get the bonus. Rebounded by Wyndham. Boy, he's had a game. These seniors have played their hearts out for the Bearcats tonight. 3.20 left in the game. Bearcats with the ball with 11-point lead. Down to Wyndham. Bearcats going to be. Flanagan, Flanagan inside, has it blocked by Lane. Gets it back, puts it up, and he's going to be fouled. Foul will go against the Tigers. I believe they're going to call it on Williams. Going to call it on Williams. Good call there, Ed. His third. Flanagan to the line. They're showing two on the scoreboard on Williams. So Flanagan... Good it's on the, the first. first. So 313 to go. Dexter with their biggest lead. 12 points. They haven't put it on the board yet. Second one scores it. There they get them that time. Playing it checks back out. Taylor Gerald in on the stoppage of the clock. They can substitute like that. Flanagan, they want to use him offensively. 305 left. Williams inside is going to be fouled. He'll go to the line to shoot a one and one. Foul on Stoker is fourth. Williams knocks the first down. We'll get the bonus. He now has 10 in the game. Flanagan back in for the Bearcats. Checking in for... 
Cape Central is Ross McClanahan. He uh, is a six-foot sophomore, played in the JV game. Second one will not go. Lane with a rebound. We're going to have a jump ball. Jump ball will stay with the Tigers on the alternate jump. Twelve-point lead by the Bearcats. They've been up as many as 13 in this fourth quarter. Weas puts up a quick three. It's short. Rebounded by Lane. We're going to have a blocking foul on Flanagan. He's going to be called for his fifth. With 2.57 to go in the game, Allen Flanagan pass, uh, will foul out. Flanagan finishes tonight with 12 points. How many rebounds did he have, Ed? This evening at track, and he only had four rebounds. But, of course, he played a lot of the second half here just on the offensive end. Coach Nichols discussing with one of the officials about that fifth foul. Taylor Gerald will come into the game for Flanagan. Just under three minutes to go in this game. Coach Church, Coach Nichols going back at each other. Not bad. They're just talking about, about a few things. See Ross McClanahan checked in for the Tigers. He had a great three-point shooting extravaganza there in the JV game. Lane knocks that first one down. Lane with 14 rebounds this evening. Gets the second one. Tigers get a press. We've got a timeout on the floor with 2.56 to go. Bearcats up a 10. We'll be right back. For lunch, supper, anytime, the best food in Dexter is always Pizza Hut Wing Street. Our famous pizzas are handmade with all natural ingredients, no fillers, no preservatives. For a quick lunch, try our buffet. Eat all you want. Our delicious pasta selections will soon be your family favorite. And Wing Street Wings are perfect for get-togethers. Wing it like a pro. Add potato wedges, dunkers, or mini pies with a two-liter of your favorite Pepsi product, and you've got a full meal. There's always something good cooking at your Dexter Pizza Hut. Call or order online today. Well, welcome back. 2.56 to go in the game. Bearcats up by 10. Cape Central will put in a full court man-to-man -man press. Wyndham will inbound for the Bearcats. Summers will set the screen and roll. He's going to get the ball. Howard with a takeaway. Gets it over to Tool who puts it up, scores his first basket. Just like that. Eight point lead, we're gonna have a foul on the Tigers. It's gonna be Ross McClanahan, his first to the line to shoot a one and one will be uh, Gary Summers. That's 10, that's gonna be an that's automatic gonna be two. two. Good call there, Bill. Glad you saw that, it corrected me. 2.43 left in the game. Summers hits the first. Lead back up to nine. He has four in the game. Second one short. Ger uh, Taylor Gerald tipped the ball around. But Williams comes away with it. He gets it to McClanahan. McClanahan into the front court. Gets it to Howard. Howard to Toole. Tool tried to pass down to Lane. Ball off Lane's hands. Ball put up. And Lane gets, gets the rebound and puts it back. We're going to take a short break. We'll be right back. If you believe that investors should be heard, not herded. If you have the audacity to believe I can see you in two weeks is quite frankly weak. Join the nearly 7 million investors who think like you do. FaceTime and ThinkTime make a difference. Join us. Join us. Join us. At Edward Jones, it's how we make sense of investing. Two twenty left in this game. 
Bearcats up by seven with the ball. Wyndham will inbound. Tigers uh, not only tall, I'm impressed with their quickness, especially on this man-to-man defense. Summers will get the inbound pass. Gets it to Stoker. Stoker in backcourt still to Williams, or to Wyndham. Wyndham to Stoker. 2-10 left. Bearcats with the ball. Wyndham has it. Throws down to Gerald underneath. Puts it up. Scores it. Big bucket by Gerald. Great pass there by Wyndham. Oh, it was. Two minutes left. Bearcats up by nine. Lane inside. Cuts that lead back to seven. We've Williams. got a quick timeout with 1.53 left to go in the game. Bearcats up by seven. We'll take a short break. So you're wondering what's the better deal, cable or the dish? Well, let's see how they size up. The dish has no local office, no ability to provide their own high-speed internet or phone for bundled savings, and can require a two-year contract with hefty early termination fees. Cable, on the other hand, has local offices, its own high-speed internet, and phone services with a lot of great features. New Wave Communications, there really is no better choice. In the three and a half decades that we've been in business, Countywide Insurance has taken pride in being a partner in the lives and businesses of our customers. We've celebrated their triumphs and stood beside them in the hard times. We've been a resource and a sounding board for everything from protecting home and heart to reducing business risk. We're grateful for the trust our clients invest in us. We look forward to a continuing partnership with them, and we want to be the one you turn to. Your hometown agency, Countywide Insurance. Just back to action as the Bearcats inbound the ball to Taylor Cheryl, and he's, he'll go to the line to shoot two as he was fouled. The foul that time was on. McClanahan again. That's McClanahan's second. Cheryl is one for two from the line. He has five points in the game. The 6'2 junior. Big free throws here. Knocks the first one down. 50-42, it's, it's imperative that the Bearcats score these free throws. Uh, absolutely, because this is what we're going to see until the game the Tigers foul oh, yeah. as soon as the Bearcats touch the ball so that they can stop that clock. Well, if they can't get the steal right away, that's what they're going to do is, is foul. You're gonna make them, uh, they're going to make them beat you at the free throw line. Williams for a long three, scores it. <laughs> Williams has four threes in the game. Bowman with the ball, and he's going to be fouled. Foul will be on Williams, his fourth. John Bowman has 10 points in the game, has not been to the line. He'll have two with 135 left to go in this game. Rick, I believe you better call the fire marshal out. It, it, it's going to go pretty good here. Bowman knocks the first one down, puts the Bearcats back up a seven. Gets the second with two big free throws by both Bowman and Gerald. And still. Dexter with a near steal, but Summer's going to be called with the push, his second. The line to shoot two as both teams now are in the double bonus will be Howard. Howard has been to the line once tonight. He's one for two. That was in the second quarter. He has three in a game. First one rolls off the front of the rim. 132 left. 92 seconds. Second one knocks it down. Nine point lead by the Bearcats. Stoker with the ball to Wyndham. Try to get it to Bowman, but knocked out of bounds. Or were knocked out of bounds by the Tigers. Wyndham will inbound. 127 left. They went a game like this. If, if you're wanting the clock to run, it, it seems like it's every second is 10. And if you're not wanting it to run, yeah. it seems like a one second is 10 seconds. So. so Dexter with the timeout as they cannot inbound the ball. And uh, we'll be right back with a minute 27 to go in the ballgame. 
And folks, if you've not been to the Winchester Place, come in and take a look at this facility. You don't know what you have missed. We are very proud of this facility. A lot of people do not realize we're here, what we can offer to them, and what a facility we have. And we would like to have people come by anytime and tour us. You won't find a better place to live or better staff to take care of you anywhere southeast Missouri. I'll guarantee it. We are located at 400 Winchester Drive. Come down Bowman and we sit on the corner of Bowman and Winchester. Welcome back. Boy, we've seen a dandy tonight, folks. Bearcats on senior night had the lead. The biggest lead has been 13. Tigers' biggest lead has been nine. We've had five lead changes. Bearcats with the ball. They'll have it at midcourt, will inbound. A lot of discussion going on at midcourt there, Ed. Yes. Wyndham getting final instructions there from Coach Nichols. Uh, but talking Coach to Doug Church. Cox, the official score on how many timeouts they have. Looks like they're correcting the score, 53-46. 53-46. So seven-point lead. Instead of a nine-point lead, it's Wyndham inbounds it to Stoker. He's going to be fouled by McClanahan. It'll be McClanahan's third. Stoker will go to the line. He has seven points in the game. Has not been to the line all night. He'll have two shots, 124 left in this game. Stoker misses a first. Williams. Williams, Williams checking in for Compass. Compass for the Tigers. Checking the, the scores, what they're doing, they're checking with Doug Cox. That's that's what I've got the score 53-46. Of course, I'm unofficial. And that's what they've got on the uh, clock right now, 53-46. Just as you see on our screen with 124 left. I think they're satisfied that is a correct score. Stoker will shoot the free throw. Gets the second one down, and now has eight. For an eight-point lead with the 124 to go in the ball game. Howard with a runner, can't get it down, but a foul is going to go against the Bearcats. Will go against Taylor Gerald. His second. The line for two will be Terrence Howard. Howard is two for four from the line. He has four points. He eyes the first. It's short. Compass Just got an email from our friend Greg Schwartz saying great job with the broadcast and it's a good looking picture. So, hey, Gregory, good to hear from you, bud. Greg, a former intern with YHC, graduate uh, past December at Simo State. Great guy. Rick's got his finger on the speed dial. <laughs> Howard knocks that free throw down. Seven point lead. Bearcats with the ball. Stoker picks up the dribble, gets it to Bowman. Bowman quickly in the front court. Down to Summers. Clock running with 110 left to go in this game. Howard going to commit the foul, and Stoker will go back the line to shoot two. Third, three fouls on Howard. 108, 68 seconds left. Bearcats are smelling an upset. Tigers are not giving up. Big free throws by the senior. Can't get the first one to go. Williams checking back in for the Tigers. Coming out is Compass. Williams with four fouls, and he's going to be here strictly for his offensive threat from here on out. 
Stoker eyes that second one, knocks it down. Stoker now with nine, 55-47, 105, and the clock running left to go in this game. Williams with the ball, gets it to Tool. Tool drives in, puts it up, it's blocked, but a foul going to be called on the Bearcats. The line to shoot two will be Vance Tool. He's a 5'10 sophomore. Foul on Taylor Gerald, his third. Tool has two points in this game. He also played in the JV game. Knocks the first one down. Compass back in for Williams for the Bearcats. 55.7 seconds left. A lot of time. Second one, it's good. Checking in for Cape is David Watts. Wyndham inbounds to Stoker. Stoker being double teamed. Dribbles the ball. Lane is going to be called for the foul. The line to shoot two will be Brandon Stoker with 52 seconds left in this game. Williams checking back in for the Tigers. It's cool making it a two-point pos- or two-possession game with both those free throws. So uh, see if Brandon well, can connect two on one. Game. It's 55, can make it back up to a three. three. Yes. Stoker two for four from the free throw line this quarter. Misses the first. Williams checks in. Big free throw right here. Compass coming out for the Tigers. McClanahan going in for the Tigers. Coming out is David Watts. Check it. That's Howard coming out for the Tigers. That'll make it a three-possession game. Stoker gets the second three-possession game. Three-pointer put up a long way out that time, but Watts couldn't get it to go. Tipped out of bounds by the Tigers with 40.5 seconds left. Howard checks in for Williams for the Tigers. Wyndham will inbound, gets it to Stoker. Stoker being triple teamed along the baseline. Gets it to Bowman. Gerald Wall alone, Bowman couldn't see. Clock running. We're down to 30.3 seconds left. Bowman will go to the line to shoot two. Foul that time on David Watts, his first. Bowman to the line to shoot two. Senior's got 12 in a game. Big free throws here. Knocks that first one down. Nothing but net, baby. Shot looks good. Yep. Our good friend Lloyd Rice is those left-handers. Just shoot those free throws that much prettier. Bowman connects on both. Nine-point lead by the Bearcats. Howard quickly in the front court. Puts up a runner. Will not go. Tipped around. Bowman with the rebound. 20 seconds to go. Stoker with the ball. The Bearcats are going to come away with a win on senior night. It's a big game for the Bearcats. They're going to go to 14-11. The seniors will never forget this night, Ed. They go to 14-11. What a great win for the Bearcats. 58-49. Beat a bigger team. And I'll tell you what, I just... I am just ecstatic the way the Bearcats played defense tonight. What a win for the Bearcats. Just just a great defensive ever all night long by the Bearcats, but then also in the first half, very disciplined on the office and then making great passes, waiting for the shot and the play to develop, not forcing anything, keeping the game close so that here in the second half they could put do what they had to do to put the game away. What a great win. I tell you what, we, we came to this game not knowing what to expect, but on senior night, you never know what will happen. And what a wonderful win for the Bearcats right here in this new Bearcat Event Center. And they beat a SEMO Conference foe tonight, a tough foe, a very tall and talented team in the Cape Central Tigers. This has got to give this uh, Bearcat team some momentum and an uplift and confidence going into the districts next week in which they host right here at the Bearcat Center. 
Absolutely. And so uh, it's going to be a great night for the seniors and a great weekend. And uh, they'll be ready to play some basketball next week. Well, we're going to take a short break. We'll be back with some final stats in just a moment. Hey, I'm Kurt Hillis at Lincoln Lacey Chevrolet. We've got a full line of GMC, Chevrolet, and Buick products. I'll pass it over to my Ford man, Charlie Thacker. GM, not your thing. Come check us out here at the Ford Dodge Jeep store. Check out my man Blake on the internet, LincolnLacey.com. If you don't have time to come down to Malden, check us out on cars.com or allthetrader.com. And if you need financing, I'm going to pass it to my man Robert Sanders. And our ultimate goal here at Lincoln Lacey, no matter your situation, is to pass the savings on to you. What a great win for the Bearcats on senior night. I tell you, I, I just, uh, you just your heart goes out to them. I mean, they've had a season that been up and down, up and down, and a big SEMO Conference Bowl in uh, Cape Central. Yes. And they've got to be just, just in that uh, locker room. They've just got to be pounding around and just, just <laughs> thrilled to death. Absolutely. You know, it was a great win for them against the taller, I won't say more talented, but a very talented uh, Cape Tiger team. And so uh, just, you know, here again on senior night, they all played very well tonight, so uh, just congratulations again to the Bearcats, and uh, best of luck to them next week at the districts. Well, let's go over the scoring for the uh, victorious Bearcats. They go to 14-11 on the season. John Bowman with 14 points. Boy, did he play both ends of the court tonight. Glad to see him with that ankle. Uh, looks like it's mended. He went well tonight. Maybe he needs to turn it again. I tell you, what, what a great game. 12 points by Allen Flanagan, 10 by Brandon Stoker. Seven by Taylor Gerald, uh, five by Ryan Windham, four by Gary Summers, three each to Bryn Hester and Logan Roby. 19 for 29 from the free throw line were the Bearcats. For the, the uh, Cape uh, Central Tigers, who now go to 15 and eight on the season, they were led in scoring by James Lane. What a ball player he is. He had 20 points, 13 by Andrew Williams, five each to Terrence Howard and to Bor Boone. Four to uh, Vance Toole and two to Blake Osmond. 11 for 18 were the Cape Central Tigers from the line. What do you have for us, Ed? Well, for the Dexter Bearcats, uh, on the rebound, 14 rebounds for the team being led by Ryan Wyndham with five, Alan Flanagan four, John Bowman three, and uh, Gary Summers uh, with two. Uh, they also only committed seven turnovers this evening. As we talked about, they were very disciplined with the ball, especially in the first half and they were 5 of 13 from the three-point line. And uh, for the Cape Central Tigers, uh, 27 rebounds, their athleticism and, and leaping ability really proved, especially in the first half. Being led there by James Lane, uh, had 15 rebounds. Uh, Zach Borboon, five, uh, Andrew Williams, five, and Blake Osmond had two. Uh, as far as from the free th or the three-point line, they were four for seven for the evening, uh, but the Dexter Bearcat defense getting to them a little bit as they committed 18 turnovers. Yeah, the, the press, uh, I thought, by the Bearcats uh, was a turning point of this game. Also, uh, I, I just I just can't say enough about Dexter's defense. Once the ball got inside to the taller team, the defense collapsed uh, on that uh, matchup, and Gary Summers, he just had a field day in there knocking the ball out of somebody's hands. If he wasn't doing, John Bowman was. And what, what a great defensive uh, game by the Bearcats. Uh, hats off to them. Tell you what, those young people played their hearts out tonight and uh, just did a great job and, and a great win for Rob Nichols and Sean Geatley. I know they've got to be very, very thrilled. Absolutely. You know, they, they've had some real tear jerkers this, this season, and so to come out with a good quality win like this against a conference opponent, you just, you just can't say enough about the kids, the team, and everything. So uh, as our friends from Cape Central who drove over and see the facilities for the first time, uh, you know, Scott McClanahan and his son Ross had a great JV game and uh, contributed there in the uh, varsity game. Bart Osmond, uh, his son, having a very solid game this evening on the varsity end as well. So uh, thanks for those guys coming over. Again, tip your hats on senior night. Congratulations to all the seniors, not just the basketball guys being recognized before the game. And uh, so just a great, great, great win for the Bearcats here at this beautiful facility. This game tonight has been brought to you by Lincoln Lacey and Malden, also Three Rivers Community College. 
Stop by and see Charlie Flanagan here in Dexter. He's with Edward Jones, New Wave Communications, Winchester Place in Bernie. Also, Dexter Pizza Hut. Sound like a good place to go after the game. <laughs> Get a good pizza. SEMOSportsWeb.com. Trammell and Son Realty in Dexter. Allen, Christian, Buick, Pontiac, GMC in Dexter. Countywide Abstract in Dexter. For our camera people all season long, Brandon Horton also. Haley Stockton, what a great job they have done. We also want to thank our producer tonight, my partner at YHC TV, Tyler Wagner, Ed uh, Gargus helping me bring the game tonight. We want to tell you, folks, this is our 53rd basketball game of the year to be broadcast on YHC. 37 of these games have been done live. We can't say enough thanks to New Wave Communications for what they have done to let us broadcast these games live. We want to thank the Bloomfield School System. We also want to thank the Dexter School school System for allowing us to bring these games live to you. What a great game you've seen tonight. It was a D-A-N-D-Y dandy. It was a barn burner. And I'm telling you, Al Bankin's got the truck outside, the hook and ladder. They're ready to put it out, I can tell you. Folks, have a great weekend. We uh, want to thank you for joining us all season long. It's been a short season except for my bride. She said, I'm ready for it to be over. (laughs) (laughs) But I tell you, we could do whatever that. There's just something else about high school basketball. Again, thanks for joining us. I'm Bill Hampton. Until next season, uh, keep your head up. Put your seatbelts on if you're going to be out and about on the roadway. We know you'll be much safer. Don't forget, live today. Learn from yesterday. Look forward to tomorrow. Can't wait the next season.